Can you envision a time when your car is not just self-driving, but wirelessly self-charging? No plugins or socket required at all. We're going under the hood with Evo to explore this fascinating development and the technology behind it. And we look around the corner at how all the needed electricity can be produced and managed in an environmentally responsible way. Tech meet sustainability on this episode of All Things Automotive. Go on a cloud innovation journey with me, Stefano Marzani, as I'm joined by guest experts and mobility leaders to look at the drivers of transformation on all things automotive. Hi, Jeremy. How are you Good doing? Good to see you, Stefano. Thanks for uh, being us with us uh, today. So why don't you tell us a little bit what, he, what Hevo is and uh, what, what you're doing, guys? We're doing something spectacular. We're making wireless electric vehicle charging and we're doing it because people need more access to charging infrastructure. So you just uh, put wireless charging in the asphalt. Uh, we were talking about that kind of technology. Yeah, right? exactly. It's uh, meant for you to be able to go anywhere. anywhere. And I have to worry about charging with cords or cables. No more, no more plugging. Exactly. Thing. Yeah. And why, char why wireless charging is so important, so transformational? Well, first thing is that it helps to eliminate some of the user experience problems. And with wireless charging, it's universal around the globe. It's been certified, it's been qualified, this technology is ready to go. Yeah, I think it solves a lot of problems, but what is the user seeing? Do you have an app, right? That's right. So one of the problems that people face when they get an electric vehicle, do you have an electric vehicle yet? Not yet, hopefully soon. Well, when you get an electric vehicle, you're gonna find out real quick. It's hard to find charging stations. We've come up with a solution for that problem. So here we've got the Journey app by Hevo. And if I come here to our location, you can see all these wow. pins. These are plug-in charging stations oh. readily available here. So if you wanted to go to, say, San Francisco, let's uh, see what locations are available for charging. There's a lot of charging stations in San Francisco, but let's go to this location here, the Asian Art Museum. Yeah, it's one, so, my, one of my favorite spots in San Francisco. It's great. Own. So you've got you know the reviews and everything that you would normally see. If I hit go here, now you're going to see that well, this is your starting state of charge, or the battery percentage is 57%. You don't want to arrive at less than 20% battery. And also, what if you have a couple of extra people with you? So we're gonna add those couple of extra people in here. And when I hit plan your journey, what it's gonna do is take into account terrain, traffic, weather, wow. your state of charge, the type of connectors that your vehicle's suited to use, and then really base that all on what's the fastest way to get you there. And you can see we already have a there route plan for you. So here we can see it's gonna take you eight hours and 15 minutes to get to San Francisco, of which seven hours and 28 minutes is gonna be for driving. You're gonna have 46 minutes for charging, and then you're gonna have four stops on your 416 mile journey, which is gonna cost you $16.93. Fantastic. Uh, imp really impressive compared yeah. to petrol you know, pricing. If I hit start here, you have turn-by-turn -turn navigation. And what's important about that is, yes, it's gonna take you just as you would normally use, turn by turn navigation in a mapping app, but this is gonna to continue to track your vehicle's performance, your state of charge. So if wow. for some reason you're running into traffic or weather or you're driving more aggressively than you should because you got a great Mach-E or another you know, electric vehicle, then in that case, it's gonna have you stop at another location earlier so you don't run out of juice. So from turn, turn navigation to turn, turn charging. <laughs> exactly. Now, what about the future? This has already been built with what we call wireless road or dynamic charging mm -hmm. in mind. So you can see here, if you were driving where there's a wireless road available to charge your vehicle while you're driving, this message would prompt up and say dynamic charging ahead and ask you if you want to charge. And that's going to set in place everything that you need to know while you're charging and driving at the same time. Yeah, so that's fantastic. It's it really is. interesting. And what this is showing you is how much power is being delivered, how much you're spending while you're charging, how long you've been charging while you're driving and also the percentage added to your vehicle. When I hit stop charging, we're gonna get this receipt. And this receipt's gonna tell us, tell us how much you spent, wow. uh, how much battery was added to your vehicle, a couple of other metrics, but we also show how much impact you had. So what this means is that we take into account the difference if you would have used petrol versus charging wirelessly and potentially on renewable, that difference is your impact. Yeah, that's fantastic. And we love when technology meets uh, sustainability, obviously. My operations research professor at the university would be very happy, by the way. But let's look a little bit behind the scenes about it, right? And talk about, uh, I think all of this is on AWS, right? The backend right. part. So yeah, yeah, we let's, have let's nine, go through it a bit. We have nine services from AWS that we wow. use for this. 
So obviously everything's built on Fargate. We've got communications coming from the power station or the equipment connected to the grid. Stationary. And then you've got, or it can be while you're driving, of course, but it's the, it's the infrastructure equipment. And you've got the vehicle side equipment, and then you've got the mobile app, the Journey app. So all these things are communicating to the cloud at real-time speed. We've got to pull that data at real-time speed, especially when somebody's driving and charging, right? Yeah. So we've got these extra containers that have been built on the Fargate system for all these services. So as we start to think about what that means in a bigger framework, it means that we're taking things like maintaining real-time communications using the Amazon MQ uh, for Rabbit MQ, And that helps us to really operationally keep the charging process moving smoothly. It helps us to maintain sending and receiving messages from Hevo between resonant uh, inverter and gateway de devices and all those things. There's, of course, this uh, database, database cluster yeah. that we need to take care of as well. So that's really where the critical data is stored, and it helps us uh, with our backend services and the workloads for those. The AWS Redis Elastic Hash is the high-performance distribution and memory data storage, yeah. right? So. Uh, this is for us where we're going to pull the details for yeah. everything like charging states, energy rates, and the various yeah. data. There's a lot of data, need. so you need to cache, cache it and make it, it yeah, yeah, obviously. And of course, we got the AWS time stream. Oh, yeah. We had to build that in because it is really about the historical data points that we need to pull. So those are the API integrations and the analysis that we, we pull on using that. The S3 or the AWS Simple Storage for us is really important. A lot of data. We've got a lot of yeah, images sure. and application assets that we have to keep. And then, of course, the CloudWatch uh, is important for all things in terms of monitoring and collecting data, monitoring logs, metrics, and events. It's yeah. uh, really a full, complete system. Like I said, we use nine different services in AWS. Yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty awesome, right, to see this combination and the uh, right technologies yeah. uh, for the right scope in yeah, order right. to monitor, optimize, reduce costs, manage costs. If, uh, personally, if I think your technology combined with self-driving, it just blows my mind, really. Really, because it means that it's wireless, so you don't have to plug anything. The car can just move on top of the charging pad. It's done. It's recharging. You can optimize the whole charging of the whole planet. It's mind-blowing. So are you looking at that? Of course. ADAS, or you know, autonomous driving, and wireless charging go together like peanut butter and jelly. There you go. It there you go. really is the marriage that happens that accelerates EV adoption. And really what we do as a wireless charging company is we unleash all these unbelievable technologies that have been built into these battery electric vehicles. Because with that giant battery pack, now these, really these vehicles have become supercomputers. There you go. And we're able to also at the same time make it where it's inherently connected to something that can be renewable. So you can take renewables and connect it right into wow. our wireless charging systems Empower your vehicle with sun while you're driving, as yeah. an example, or while you're charging. And then take that energy back home and redistribute it for your home usage or for your apartment building or even at work. So this is a new transformational way to do things. Absolutely. Nothing's ever been done like this before. Absolutely. As I was saying before, it's a new age of optimization for mobility that we are entering. So it's yeah. so exciting. So, Jeremy, what's next for Evo? Oh, we've got so much ahead for us. Just recently, we completed dynamic wireless road charging demonstrations in Detroit as the first company Seems in the world to ever do cool. that. Seems pretty cool. It was amazing. Uh, what's next for that is we're going to be doing high power systems that can charge the vehicle eight to 10 miles for every one mile driven. And that will be happening in Michigan in the second wow. half of this year. Eight to 10 miles per mile driven. That's it's, right. It's, a mind, it's, just, it's really amazing. It's really interesting. It's going to kill range anxiety. Yeah, uh, definitely. I, I, I can literally see that. So thank you so much. It's been an awesome session and we'd love to have you here. So It was my again. pleasure. Thank you so much, Stefano. Thank you. So now we talk about uh, some of the most uh, transformative factors in the automotive industry, electrification and vehicle to grid, and how they can help with climate change. With us, uh, we have today uh, Joe Beer, our worldwide tech lead of energy and utility at AWS. Welcome, Joe. Thank you, Stefano. Very happy to be here today. Yeah, thank you so much. It's such an important topic. Joe, we see all these regulations and uh, an uptick, in, uptick in EV mandates all around. Why is that? Well, it's all about reducing carbon emissions and hitting our one and a half degree climate change targets. Uh, transportation emissions account for 24% of CO2 emissions today, and half of that comes from passenger vehicles. Wow. Uh, historically, though, EVs only account for 4% of vehicle sales. 
And according to the Climate Action Tracker Report, which is published by the Paris Accord folks, that target has to rise to 75 to 95% by 2030 and 100% by 2035. We're going to hit that one and a half degree target. Yeah, real numbers, right? So Joe, how many EVs uh, are, are we talking about and uh, how are we going to charge them all? Well, good question. In 2020, there were 10 million EVs on the road. We added six to seven million more in 21, so 17 million. But that's a drop in the bucket compared to what's coming. So the International Energy Administration calculates that that's going to hit 143 million with the current mandates. And the governments around the world are working on new, new mandates, and that's going to push it to 230 million. Wow. So, so that level of EVs is going to put quite a strain on the world's grids. Yeah. And there's two problem areas I can talk about here just quickly. Yeah. So probably first is uh, how we generate all that energy. Absolutely. Hit the nail on the head. So when you look at total generation worldwide on paper, it looks like there's enough capacity. But the problems come when you go under the covers and you look at the generation source, which more and more is intermittent renewables, wind and solar. And that's where the issues are. Yeah. Because, and we can't burn coal, obviously. Yeah, yeah. We want to stay green. And so if the wind isn't blowing, the sun isn't shining, you want to stay green, what are you going to do? So... Um, that's why there's such interest in distributed storage by utilities and grid scale storage. Yeah. But distributed storage is things like battery walls and vehicle and grid. Yeah, super interesting. And I think, uh, what about uh, transferring all this energy? So, Absolutely. It has to get from where it's generated to where it's consumed, to charging stations. You either add more wires or infrastructure, which is expensive, or you're smart about it, and you use technology to manage when and how fast the EVs are charging. And that really surely requires an ecosystem effort, right? So utilities to working with uh, these players, us and uh, automakers and so on. And But let, let's start with utilities. What do they sure, think sure. about V2G? Yeah, utilities love vehicle to grid, right? To them, uh, EVs are a battery on wheels. And they would love to have EVs plugged into the grid to provide capacity into the grid during peak times. So... Uh, California, for instance, hired Lawrence Livermore Labs 2018 to do a study that showed if you take 500,000 EVs, you put them on the grid in vehicle to grid mode, they can solve that problem with the peak load and save 1.3 to 1.6 wow. billion dollars. That's a more, huge amount of money. Absolutely, it is. It is. And then, and so last, uh, what about automakers? Well, the trick now is for them to collaborate with utilities and with regulators in these pilot programs that are coming out to figure out exactly how to make this all happen. So just last March, for instance, Ford and GM are in a pilot, or we're starting a pilot with Pacific Gas and Electric to solve exactly these problems. So, Joe, this is really exceptionally interesting, and uh, it's one of the bigger evolution hopefully we'll see in our life, right? So it certainly happening. will be. So yeah. thank you so much for uh, providing all this context and information. Really, really, really interesting. You're welcome very much. As we've seen, connected, safe, and sustainable experiences are at the center of transformation in the automotive industry. Let's wrap this episode with some key takeaways. First, wireless is destined to fuel the deployment of EVs around the world. Hevo is removing the friction in the charging experience. The benefits are obvious. Literally anyone can use it because it's effortless. Second, through data coming from infrastructure and vehicles, users can optimize the system, which saves costs and enables the production, distribution, and storage of the electricity needed to power this EV revolution. And third, cloud applications can accelerate customers' acceptance of this e new EV future. Drivers will be empowered, knowing where and when to charge a car, for how long, and for how much. And now it's time for me to recharge. Join us again for our next look at the drivers of transformation in this season of All Things Automotive.